Hello everyone, back with Oni Chan. Right now, Luffy's group is lost in a strange sea. Realizing this storm is too big, Nami immediately told everyone to gather the sails back in. So, Frankie activates the Sunny's paddle system to get the whole group out of this storm. Finally, they manage to get through the storm, but they discover that this sea is very gloomy. So, Frankie and Luffy threaten Usopp saying that this sea is haunted, which scares him, suddenly, a dilapidated ship drifts towards them, shocking them all, they didn't expect a real ghost ship, at this moment, they hear a singing voice coming from the ship, making the whole group very scared, Robin realizes there's someone on the ship, and it turns out to be a singing skeleton, which makes Luffy excited, and he wants to go check it out, but Sanji stops him, Zoro suggested that everyone pull a winning ticket together, to see who will go to the ship with Luffy, which disappoints Nami, because she's the one chosen, along with Luffy and Sanji, so, they all climb aboard the ghost ship together, and as soon as they step on the ship, they see the skeleton talking to them, which excites Luffy, while Nami was worried, unexpectedly, he said to Nami, can I see your panties? Which made Nami angry and she hid him, Luffy realized he was very interesting, so, Luffy asked him, do you want to become my crewmate? Unexpectedly, he agreed, now, Luffy brought Brooke to meet everyone, which shocked them all, while Nami and Sanji were helpless with Luffy's decision, seeing this eccentric skeleton, made them all scared, only Luffy felt excited, while waiting for Sanji to prepare dinner, the group chatted with Brooke, at this moment, they were no longer afraid of Brooke, and started to be curious about him, after having dinner together, Brooke started to tell them, turns out he's eaten a devil fruit that grants resurrection powers, so, he could live again once, before, Brooke was also a pirate, but one day his ship was attacked, which caused him and his crew to die, thanks to the power of the devil fruit, his soul returned, unexpectedly, Brooke's soul got lost, and when he found his body again, he was just a skeleton, but luckily, he still had his hair, suddenly, everyone noticed that Brooke had no shadow, Brooke said his shadow had been stolen, and he couldn't touch sunlight, otherwise his body would burst into flames, because he witnessed death before his eyes, since then, he has been drifting in this dark sea, remembering his deceased crewmates, which made him very lonely, until he met Luffy's group, which made Brooke very happy, but Brooke declined the invitation to join Luffy's crew, because he lost his shadow and couldn't leave the sea, so, Luffy said he would help him get his shadow back, but Brooke refused, because the one who took it is very powerful, suddenly, they saw a ghost, so, Brooke recognized, they have arrived, when Luffy's group ran outside, they saw a gloomy island, Brooke said its name is Thriller Bark, suddenly, Brooke left, because he wanted to retrieve his shadow, he warned Luffy's group not to go to that island, so, he jumped into the sea, unexpectedly, Brooke could run on the water, now, Luffy really wants to go to the island, which worries everyone, Robin realized they were trapped on this island, while the group was scared of ghosts, Luffy was ready to go ghost hunting, realizing they couldn't stop their captain, so, the whole group prepared to explore the island, Frankie opened Sunny's door number 2, surprisingly, it turned out to be a mini Mary, it made Nami's group very happy and they controlled it, Luffy was very excited, suddenly, they noticed Nami's group was missing, at this point, the whole group realized there was something strange on the ship, unexpectedly, someone pulled Luffy's cheeks, and even took Zoro's sword to attack Luffy, they felt like something was here, but Sanji was worried about Nami, when he was about to go look for them, something pulled him back, and threw Sanji back onto the ship, even grabbing Robin, after teasing the whole group for a while, he left, on Nami's side, they got lost on the island, because Nami had steered the ship into this ravine, suddenly, a three-headed dog appeared, making the whole group run away in fear, luckily, they saw a staircase, so, Nami's group ran into the forest, and Usopp used a smoke bomb, to distract the three-headed dog, thus, all three of them escaped, suddenly, they encountered a Batman, he said that this forest is very dangerous, so, he suggested Nami's group go to Dr. Hogback's castle nearby, at this point, Nami's group got on his horse, and went to Dr. Hogback's castle, thinking he was a good person helping them, unexpectedly, Chopper also knew Dr. Hogback, because he's a genius doctor, when they looked outside, they immediately noticed how terrifying this forest was, suddenly, the Batman told Nami's group to wait for a moment, but, after waiting for a long time, he didn't come back, now, they realized he had disappeared, turns out he had brought them into the courtyard of Dr. Hogback's castle, making them very worried, unexpectedly, a bunch of zombies appeared, this made Nami's group frightened, they surrounded them and captured Usopp, seeing Usopp being attacked, 
Nami immediately attacked them. But, she also got captured. Chopper jumped up and knocked out the zombies to save Usopp. Realizing Nami was in danger, Usopp used fire bullets to scare them off. Taking this opportunity, Nami's group ran away. Finally, they managed to escape from the zombies. Now, Nami's group had arrived at Dr. Hogback's castle. So, they tried to enter inside. But, they didn't see anyone. Suddenly, a girl appeared. This immediately frightened the whole group. She threw a plate at Usopp, revealing that she didn't allow Usopp into this castle. Luckily, Dr. Hogback arrived to stop her. It turns out her name is Sindri, Dr. Hogback's maid. But, she really hates plates. So, Dr. Hogback invited Nami's group inside. At this point, he told them, he's conducting an experiment to resurrect the dead, which made Chopper very excited, and he immediately asked for his autograph. So, Nami's group rested and took a bath, while Chopper and Usopp had to stand guard outside for her, because Nami realized Dr. Hogback had deceived them, and his experiment was about creating zombies, thus, Nami decided they needed to escape. Suddenly, someone grabbed Nami, but, she didn't see anyone, he said, you shall become my wife, Chopper and Usopp ran in. Unexpectedly, Nami kicked him, so, he jumped out of the window to escape, Usopp attacked him, now, Nami realized he was invisible, while Luffy's group was preparing to find Nami's group, when they went downstairs, they encountered the three-headed dog, which threatened them, unexpectedly, Luffy wasn't afraid, he even intended to eat it, suddenly, Luffy wanted to tame it, but, it immediately bit him, so, Luffy punched the three-headed dog, and then it obediently became Luffy's pet, now, they entered the forest, suddenly, Luffy saw a horse and a tree drinking alcohol, so, Luffy and Frankie caught them, and invited them to join their crew. Meanwhile, Nami's group was leaving the castle, but, they were discovered by the Batman, seeing a painting on the wall also talking, made them frightened. Thus, she grabbed Chopper, Usopp realized everything here was a zombie, when they all attacked him, Usopp threw a torch at them, making them scared, because he knew the weakness of zombies is fire, when they tried to escape, they found the exit was locked, so, Nami's group was surrounded by the zombies again, making them terrified, Luckily, they accidentally fell into a tunnel in the fireplace. Nami thought it was safe, but, there were more zombies here, scaring Nami's group away. Fortunately, they managed to run into another room. Unexpectedly, Usopp saw a picture of Sindri here, and they realized she was Dr. Hogback's maid. But in the picture, her face had no scar. Nami was reading her diary, and discovered that Sindri used to be a famous singer. But she died from a fall on stage 10 years ago, which scared them all because they realized she was also a zombie. Suddenly, Nami saw a chest, which made her happy, thinking there might be treasure inside. Unexpectedly, it was a zombie inside, so, they continued to flee. Now, a zombie swordsman appeared, chasing Nami's group, while Luffy's group was still deep in the forest. Suddenly they saw ghosts, which made Luffy excited to catch them, but, he couldn't catch them, they went through Frankie's body, making him negative, then, Luffy and Zoro also became negative, Robin realized that if they were touched by them, they would lose all willpower. So, the ghosts left, and Luffy recovered, while Zoro was teased by Sanji. At this point, Luffy's group arrived at the graveyard. Suddenly, he saw a zombie rising up, but, Luffy pushed him back down, thinking he was an injured old man. So, the zombies appeared together, thinking they could scare Luffy's group, unexpectedly, they were beaten together. Thus, the zombies were defeated, on the Nami group side, they coincident ran to the lab of Dr. Hogback, they saw him creating a new zombie, Chopper noticed a number on the zombie's hand, while they were observing how he revived the dead, the zombie swordsman appeared, which surprised them, because his way of speaking was similar to Brooks, on Luffy's group side, they were talking to the zombies, so, Luffy asked them about Nami's whereabouts, seeing them not cooperating, it angered Luffy's group, thus, they attacked them again, causing all the zombies to bow their heads to the ground. Then, Luffy's group continued into Dr. Hogback's castle. Suddenly, an old man ran to them for help, because he recognized Luffy's group as strong. It turns out the old man wanted Luffy to help him retrieve his shadow. As the whole group wondered who had taken his shadow, he revealed that, he's called Moria. Robin recognized that, Moria is indeed one of the seven warlords of the sea, because he has stolen the shadows of many people, forcing them to hide on this island. So, Luffy decided to help him, making him and everyone here very happy. Meanwhile, Nami's group was attacked by the zombie swordsmen. They were discovered by Dr. Hogback. Despite knowing they uncovered his plan, Dr. Hogback remained calm, 
He said that the hunt would begin in a few minutes, on the side of the invisible man. He noticed that the zombies were being forced to bow their heads to the ground. So, he immediately ordered them to rise. Turns out he's the leader of the zombies, named Absalom. On another side, the ghosts were converging towards the castle, because there's a girl controlling them inside. Meanwhile, Moria received information, that the Straw Hat Pirates were here, which made him excited. While Luffy's group had reached the castle, the old man informed them, that Thriller Bark is the world's largest pirate ship. Now, Moria's subordinates ordered the zombies, to start the night hunt, on Hogback's side. He ordered Sindri, and the zombie swordsmen to capture Nami's group, but, Nami felt this zombie resembled Brook. So, Hogback revealed to them, that he's a legendary swordsman from Wano country named Ryama. Unexpectedly, when Ryama drew his sword, it swiftly passed through them, making Nami's group think they had been slashed. But, as they were about to flee, they got injured. Turns out Ryama's swordsmanship is incredibly fast, leaving opponents unaware they've been struck. Meanwhile, Luffy's group entered the castle. The zombies in the room began to surround them, but the entire group wasn't afraid, and immediately attacked them. At this moment, they just realized, Luffy's crew is very strong, very quickly, Luffy's group defeated the zombies, but, they realized there was still a pig, on Nami's side, they were locked in a coffin by Hogback, while the zombie gang outside had pulled back to the castle, at this time, Luffy's group discovered that Sanji had disappeared, but, they were not overly worried about Sanji, while the zombies were still very confident in their master, because Moria is one of the seven warlords, but, Luffy said, if he dares to harm our friends, I will destroy this entire island, immediately making the zombies frightened, on Absalom's side, he called out his high-level zombies, to capture Luffy's group for Moria, when he ordered the zombies to capture Luffy's group, suddenly, there was a wild boar zombie named Lola who stayed behind, she wanted to force Absalom to marry her, but he still refused, and said he had already chosen his bride, so, he showed Lola a picture of Nami, which made her angry, and immediately ran off to find Nami, while Luffy's group was asking the pig zombie, where Moria was, but, he still believed that Moria would catch them, at this time, the squirrel zombies were taking Nami's group to Moria's location, luckily, they fell down, so, it helped Chopper wake up, when they attacked him, Chopper immediately defeated them, thus, he woke up Nami and Usopp, at this point, Nami realized they had escaped from Hogback's laboratory, but, Nami didn't want to leave, because she realized this castle had treasure, suddenly, they were surrounded by a group of animal zombies, which made them scared, when they attacked Nami's group, Chopper tried to stop them, but, there were too many of them, and they surrounded Nami's group, so, the horde of zombies immediately attacked and subdued Usopp and Chopper, when Nami was in danger, a zombie penguin immediately saved her, because he would never hit a woman, surprising them, on Luffy's side, they realized Zoro was missing, while Frankie and Robin didn't understand what was happening, Luffy found a nearby suit of armor, which made him very happy, because he thought it was very cool, suddenly, they were attacked by a high-level zombie, surprising Frankie, because he was different from normal zombies, so, he fought back, unexpectedly, the zombie could still stand up, and continued to use sword techniques to attack Frankie, he thought he had defeated Frankie, but, he immediately got up and threw him away, they realized zombies don't feel pain, so, the pig-headed one let Luffy's group know, these zombies were all strong when alive, suddenly, all the high-level zombies appeared and surrounded them, Luffy realized they had to fight, so, they attacked them, on Nami's side, they were being protected by the zombie penguin, she recognized this zombie was very familiar, on Zoro's side, Moria had captured him, thus, he took Zoro's shadow, turned out Sanji's shadow had also been taken by him, while Luffy's group was fighting the zombies, no matter how much they fought, they kept getting back up, so, Luffy continued to attack them, unexpectedly, a zombie swordsman attacked Luffy, he realized it was Zoro's technique, surprising Luffy, because he was just like Zoro, unexpectedly, Luffy was ambushed, meanwhile, Frankie was being surrounded by the horde of zombies, luckily, Robin helped him escape, so, they ran away, but, they couldn't find Luffy, suddenly, they found out Luffy had been captured, when they were about to rescue him, they were blocked by a giant spider zombie, on the side of the zombie penguin, he was still protecting Nami's group, they realized he looked a lot like Sanji, suddenly, a wild boar zombie named Lola appeared, turns out her target was Nami, because she was jealous that Nami was chosen as Absalom's bride, so, Lola immediately attacked Nami, but, the penguin stopped her, unexpectedly, he was then knocked away by her, 
Taking advantage of this opportunity, Absalom kidnapped Nami. She recognized him as the one who peeked at her while bathing. So, Nami promptly shocked him with electricity, and Nami's group continued to run away. While Absalom kept thinking it was a love lightning bolt, when Absalom was about to chase after Nami, the penguin stood up to stop him, angry, Absalom immediately defeated him, on Nami's side, they were still being pursued by Lola, because she was jealous of Nami getting Absalom's love, Usopp and Chopper tried to stop her to help Nami, but, she was too strong, on Frankie and Robin's side, they were being surrounded by the horde of zombies, so, Frankie decided to destroy the bridge, causing the zombies to fall down, Robin then used her devil fruit power to turn into wings, and flew Frankie up, thus, they were safe, unexpectedly, the zombies were still not giving up, suddenly, Brooke fell from the sky, on Nami's side, Lola caught up, when she was about to attack her, Nami said, I am a man, making Lola surprised, at this moment, Nami said she would help Lola marry Absalom, which made Lola very happy, so, Nami started planning to help Lola, but, it turns out Nami was actually investigating where the treasure was, and found out the treasure was in Perona's room, seeing Absalom approaching, Lola ran to Absalom, taking this opportunity, Nami's group ran away, on Perona's side, she had infiltrated Luffy's ship, and took all their supplies and money, at this time, Luffy was taken to Moria's location, making him surprised, because this tall guy was actually one of the seven warlords, he said he would make Luffy his subordinate, and his goal was to become the pirate king, Nami's group thought they had escaped, unexpectedly, Absalom had found them, so, they hid inside a nearby teddy bear, thanks to that, Absalom didn't discover Nami's group, on Frankie's side, he was being attacked by the spider, thus, Robin hit him in the eyes, making him unable to see, and Frankie immediately defeated him, but, Robin was caught by a group of mice, so, he also caught Frankie, he thought he had won, unexpectedly, Brooke arrived, surprising him, and Brooke immediately defeated him, because he had slashed him before, unexpectedly, the shadow from inside his body escaped, surprising Robin and Frankie, because Brooke could defeat zombies, making the mice scared and run away, at this point, Brooke told them, turns out he had also been stranded on this island before, so, he saw Moria taking shadows from others, and putting them into the zombies created by Hogback, that's how the zombies could come back to life, because Moria had eaten a devil fruit that allowed him to control shadows, if he took the shadow of a strong person, then the zombies he created would be very strong, so, Moria always targeted those with high bounties, on Moria's side, he had gathered his subordinates, to achieve his goal of becoming the pirate king, but Luffy said, I'm the one who will become the pirate king, while Nami's group was hiding inside the teddy bear, and observing everything, they didn't know how to save Luffy, at this time, Luffy bit through the iron cage and escaped, but, he was immediately attacked by Perona's controlled ghosts, which made Luffy lose his will, it turned out Moria's plan was to take Luffy's shadow, so, he started pulling out his shadow, and cut off Luffy's shadow, making Luffy unconscious, because he wanted to create the strongest zombie, seeing Moria holding Luffy's shadow in his hand, made Nami's group worried, it turned out he had prepared an incredibly strong zombie, and intended to use it to defeat Kaido, on Brook's side, he told Robin and Frankie, that those whose shadows were taken by Moria would be taken back to the ship, at this time, he gave them two bags of salt, and said this was the weakness of the zombies, because it would help neutralize the powers of devil fruit users, on Moria's side, he began his plan, going to the body of zombie number 900, while the spiders took Luffy's body away, at this time, Nami's group was still stuck inside the teddy bear, so, they continued to observe them, on Brook's side, he went alone into the laboratory, he easily defeated all the zombies, causing the shadows inside them to escape, turns out Brook's goal was Ryama, because it was his shadow, he lost to Ryama last time, that's why Brook ended up falling into Frankie and Robin's location, on Moria's side, he arrived at the place of the zombie named Ors, making Nami's group frightened, because it was a giant demon, so, Moria began to put Luffy's shadow into the zombie, making them very excited, because they were about to see the giant zombie awaken, hearing the heartbeat of the zombie start to beat, making Nami's group frightened, so, they were discovered by them, suddenly, the castle started to shake, the giant zombie began to rise, and the first thing he said was, I want to eat meat, then created a strong wind, taking this opportunity, Nami's group immediately fled, at this point, they realized they needed to find Luffy first, suddenly, Chopper and Usopp were attacked again, it turned out Absalom was chasing them, so, he captured Nami, Usopp stood up and attacked him, 
but, he disappeared along with Nami, and took her away, making Usopp and Chopper lose track of him. Suddenly, they were surrounded by the zombies, so, they captured both of them, making them frightened. Luckily, Robin and Frankie arrived in time. Thus, they used Brook's salt to defeat the zombies, causing their shadows to escape, making Usopp and Chopper very happy. At this time, Brooke arrived at Ryama's location, to fight him and reclaim his shadow. On Frankie's side, they escaped from the zombies. So, he told Usopp how to defeat the zombies. At this time, Moria took all the food in the castle to feed Ors. But no matter how much Ors ate, he was still not full. Thus, he ordered the zombies to take all the reserve food for Ors, making Ors excited. So, Moria ordered Ors to become his subordinate. But Ors refused, because he had his own dream. So, Ors broke through the wall and went outside. At this point, he said, I will become the Pirate King. While Brook was fighting with Ryama, on Frankie's side, they were running back to the sunny ship. Suddenly, Usopp discovered they had been robbed of all their food, and they found Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji. But no matter how they tried to wake them up, they wouldn't regain consciousness. Usopp came up with an idea and shouted, There's meat, there are girls, and swords. Unexpectedly, all three of them immediately woke up. At this point, Zoro realized his shadow was missing, while Luffy was angry about losing all the food. Sanji discovered Nami was missing. Knowing that Absalom wanted to marry Nami, made Sanji furious. At this moment, they told all three of them everything that happened, and Frankie told Luffy that Brooke chose to live alone until this moment, to fulfill a promise with a whale named Laboon. So, Frankie believed he was a true man, when Laboon was mentioned, Luffy and everyone realized. Laboon was the whale they had encountered when they first entered the Grand Line. Because he had been waiting for so long, Laboon had been continuously hitting his head against a rock. So, Luffy promised Laboon that he would come back, and even left his signature mark on Laboon's head. Knowing that Luffy's group had met Laboon before, made Frankie surprised. On Brook's side, he was still fighting with Ryama. Although Brook was constantly being knocked down by him, but, Brook kept trying to get up, because he had to return to meet Laboon. Unexpectedly, Ryama was very strong, and cracked Brook's facial bones. So, Brook continued to be defeated by Ryama, while Luffy's group was very happy, and wanted Brook to become their teammate. Thus, this time the whole team decided to counterattack them. At this moment, Ors realized his arms and legs couldn't stretch out, which confused him, because in his subconscious, his arms and legs could stretch out. So, Ors climbed up the mast to find a way to the sea. On Luffy's side, they wanted to defeat Moria, while Sanji was burning with anger, because he wanted to defeat Absalom to save Nami. At this point, Usopp distributed a bag of salt to everyone, to deal with the zombies, so, they set off. Meanwhile, Ors climbed up the mast and saw the sea, which made him very happy, while Moria remained unconcerned, continuing to observe Ors. Suddenly, Moria received news that Luffy's group was attacking here to reclaim the shadows. While Luffy and Sanji were attacking the zombies, making them fearful, it turned out they had split into two groups, on Zoro and Frankie's side, they had also defeated many zombies. At this point, Perona controlled her ghost to pass through Luffy and Sanji, causing them to lose all willpower. Seizing this opportunity, the zombies immediately surrounded and captured them, so, Usopp attacked them, and immediately led Luffy and Sanji away. But the ghosts still chased after them, suddenly, Ors jumped down and accidentally broke the bridge, accidentally separating Usopp and Sanji, causing them to fall to where Zoro and Frankie were. Suddenly, Usopp made a discovery, in front of them stands Ors, Luffy's shadow, on Luffy's side, they are still searching for Moria. Unexpectedly, they encounter Hogback and Sindri, so, Chopper decides to fight him, to let Luffy continue searching for Moria. When Sindri tries to stop Luffy, Robin immediately grabs her, to let Luffy move forward. At this moment, Chopper is very angry, because Hogback is an unethical doctor. Suddenly, he summons the shadows of Zoro and Sanji, to deal with them. On Luffy's side, they have found Moria, but, he remains calm, while Usopp is frightened, thinking Ors will attack them. Unexpectedly, he merely grabs a rock, to mimic a pirate, surprising the whole group, because he looks just like Luffy. So, they continue running into the castle. Suddenly, they encounter Perona waiting for them. It turns out she has eaten the Horo Horo Devil fruit, allowing her to create and control ghost spirits. Immediately, she controls the ghosts to attack them, making them lose all their will, and feel unworthy of existence. Perona thinks she has won, so, she orders her zombie minions to capture them. Unexpectedly, 
Usopp immediately shoots salt into their mouths, making Perona surprised. Thus, she continues to attack Usopp once again, but, Usopp remains unfazed, because he has always been a pessimist, which shocks Perona. At this point, Usopp decided to stay behind, to hold off Perona for Zoro's group to proceed, but unexpectedly, they all leave, leaving Usopp alone, which worries him. On the other hand, Absalom is preparing to marry Nami. While Nami is still unconscious, this made him very happy as he was about to kiss Nami. Perona still doesn't believe Usopp can nullify her powers, so, she continues to try to attack him. Unexpectedly, her ghosts turn negative, surprising the zombie horde. Meanwhile, Usopp is feeling very confident, and he shoots salt into the mouths of the zombies. Unexpectedly, they shut their mouths, so, Usopp continued to be pursued by them. On Brook's side, he is still fighting Ryama, no matter how he fights. Brooke is no match for him, still, Brooke gets back up, thus, they decide to end this fight. As they both pass by each other, unexpectedly, Ryama strikes Brooke first, so, Brooke loses, but he still remembers Laboon, as Ryama is about to finish him off. Luckily, Frankie and Zoro arrived in time, and Zoro managed to stop Ryama. On Luffy's side, he declared to Moria, I will defeat you. Meanwhile, Absalom is trying to kiss Nami, but the ship keeps shaking. Preventing him from doing so, it turns out Oars pulled the ship's anchor, causing it to float in the current. So, Absalom orders the zombies to stop Oars. But, Oars move surprisingly fast, and immediately uses Luffy's consecutive punches to attack them, surprising Absalom. Because Oars is attacking his own side, suddenly, Sanji appears, delighted to have found Nami. Meanwhile, Zoro pushes back Ryama, make Brook surprised, because Zoro is very strong. At this moment, Zoro realized that his sword was very sharp, and tells Zoro that it's one of Wano Country's 21 great grade swords, named Shisui, which excites Zoro, so, he decides to take this sword. While Luffy is attacking Moria, he's blocked by Moria's shadow, thus, he orders his own shadow to attack Luffy, it turns out he's waiting for Oars to forget all his memories, and become his zombie, so, Luffy began to counterattack, but his shadow transformed into bats to block Luffy, on Usopp's side, he used fire to defeat the zombies. When he was about to attack Perona, she ran away. So, Usopp chased after her, unexpectedly. The teddy bear also chased after him. Usopp realized it was very strong. Thus, he ran away. Meanwhile, Sanji attacked the zombies, to rescue Nami, making Absalom furious, and he immediately attacked Sanji. But, Sanji dodged. At this point, he managed to anger Sanji, for daring to turn Nami into his bride. So, he kicked Absalom flying into the wall, leaving him puzzled at Sanji's strength, because his body had been enhanced by Hogback to 661 pounds. Sanji continuously kicked him, to avenge his disrespect towards Robin and Nami. Realizing the situation was unfavorable, Absalom turned invisible to escape, but, Sanji detected him, and continued with a powerful kick, Sanji said, I still have another grudge against you leaving Absalom confused about this grudge. As he continued to attack Sanji, Sanji dodged and kicked the gun hidden in Absalom's hand. It turns out his invisibility power helped him conceal this gun. At this point, Sanji informed him that his grudge against him is for eating the invisibility devil fruit, stealing Sanji's dream of entering the women's bath, making him think it was a ridiculous dream. So, Sanji kicked him. Now, Absalom was truly enraged. Thus, he decided to fight Sanji seriously because Hogback had enhanced his body, granting him the strength of various animals, so, he turned invisible to sneak attack Sanji, at this point, Sanji couldn't tell where he was, even though he was being attacked, but, he still had to protect Nami, unexpectedly, Absalom used the knife hidden behind his back, causing Sanji to fall and drop Nami, but Sanji caught him, no matter how Absalom attacked him, Sanji wouldn't let go, and he immediately counterattacked Absalom, Continuing to kick him into the wall, on Luffy's side, he was being bitten by Moria's bats, but no matter how many times Luffy defeated them, the bats would regenerate into Moria's shadows again. So, Luffy decided to surprise attack Moria, making him angry, on Usopp's side, he was still chasing Perona, while the teddy bear was chasing him, thus, he continuously attacked Usopp, he realized that fire was his weakness, so, Usopp immediately created a wall of fire to block him, at this point, Usopp found Perona, unexpectedly, she could fly, this left Usopp surprised, when Usopp tried to attack her, she could also enlarge herself, making Usopp frightened, now, Perona moved very quickly, so, Usopp couldn't shoot her accurately, 
unexpectedly, she could phase through Usopp's body, getting close to his heart, making Usopp scared, thinking he was about to die, but, it turns out Perona was just teasing, because currently, she was in ghost form, so, she couldn't touch Usopp, and she could even pass through everything, Usopp tried to attack Perona, but all of his attacks were futile, Usopp thought she wouldn't attack him either, unexpectedly, Perona could create ghost bombs, causing Usopp to explode, so, Usopp ran away in fear, but, Perona caught up with him, and continuously used ghost bombs to attack Usopp, injuring him, and realizing this battle was unfair, unexpectedly, the teddy bear caught up and attacked Usopp, making him think he was about to die, but, Usopp still wanted to become stronger to help Luffy, so, he immediately put on the mask of Soge King, giving Usopp confidence, and he immediately put salt into the teddy bear's mouth, causing the shadow of the teddy bear to escape, making Perona angry, so, Usopp immediately ran away, at this moment, Perona continued to use her ghost to cling onto Usopp, this caused him to continue to explode, but, Usopp was also realizing her secret, hidden in a nearby room, so, Usopp immediately shot at the room, making Perona worried, it turns out her real body was there, thus, Usopp immediately attacked Perona's real body, Perona created a huge ghost bomb to capture Usopp, at this point, Perona returned to her real body, on Luffy's side, he was still attacking Moria, but constantly being blocked by his shadow, turns out Moria was still waiting for Ors to lose all his memories, while Ors still wanted to become the Pirate King, on Robin's side, she was trying to capture Zoro's shadow, but, it was very strong, and managed to escape, while Chopper was fighting with Sanji's shadow, unexpectedly, Zoro's shadow attacked from the side, making Sanji's shadow angry, so, they started fighting each other, taking advantage of this opportunity, Chopper immediately grabbed him, therefore, Robin could put salt into his mouth, unexpectedly, Sanji's shadow attacked Robin, this surprised Chopper, because he didn't expect him to attack a woman, thus, they were both captured, on Or's side, he had completely lost all his memories, so, he immediately returned to Moria's location, at this point, Perona woke up, and immediately set off a bomb, unexpectedly, Usopp managed to escape, thanks to the seashell absorbing shockwaves, Perona realized she couldn't move, turns out Usopp had shot glue at her earlier, so, Usopp immediately attacked her, making Perona anxious, unexpectedly, it turned out to be a bullet containing a swarm of cockroaches, making Perona frightened, Usopp then took out his 10-ton hammer, and immediately struck Perona's head, causing her to faint, even though the 10-ton hammer was fake, but, Usopp won, on Zoro's side, he wanted to take Ryama's black sword, so, he immediately attacked him, unexpectedly, Ryama was also very strong, Brooke realized both of them were swordsmanship masters, Ryama continued to attack Zoro, thus, Zoro used all of his techniques to fight him, even cutting through the entire castle, they continued to attack each other, at this point, they were fighting on top of the castle, making Brooke surprised, because both of them could move and fight on the roof, unexpectedly, Ryama unleashed a very strong slash, luckily, Zoro managed to dodge it, and he immediately used his ultimate technique, so, Ryama was hit, causing his body to burst into flames, while Zoro fell off the roof, at this point, Ryama realized he had lost, thus, he decided to give the sword Shisui to Zoro, but, Zoro still respected his opponent, so, Brook's shadow returned, making him very happy, on Chopper and Robin's side, they were caught by Hogback, at this point, Chopper was very angry, because he had always admired Hogback, unexpectedly, he was an unethical doctor, and he did everything for money, seeing him hitting Sindri, even making her lick the floor, made Chopper even more angry, at this point, he told them, it turned out he used to love Sindri, because she was a kind girl, but, when he was about to confess to her, he saw she loved someone else, making him disappointed, when he found out Sindri died after falling on stage, he tried everything to revive her, so, he met Moria, and thanks to Moria's help, Sindri came back to life, at this point, Chopper realized, what he did was merely for his own pleasure to satisfy himself, thus, he ordered Sindri to attack Chopper, but, Chopper still ran up and grabbed Sindri, because he wanted to help Sindri regain consciousness, not wanting her to continue being Moria's puppet, unexpectedly, Chopper's words impacted Sindri, when Robin was about to put salt into her mouth, they were immediately stopped by Sanji's shadow, Zoro's shadow also attacked them, surprisingly, making Sanji's shadow angry, so, they started fighting each other, taking advantage of this, Robin captured Hogback, realizing that these two zombies were exactly like Zoro and Sanji, 
Unexpectedly, Hogback was deceived by Robin, ordering the two zombies to jump out. At this point, Sindri no longer followed Hogback's orders, turns out, she regained consciousness. On Orr's side, he returned to Moria, making Luffy surprised. At this point, Chopper had captured Hogback, so, Robin used her devil fruit power to lift Chopper up, to finish off Hogback, while Orz accepted Moria as his master, making Luffy angry, because he was his shadow, so, Moria ordered Orz to attack Luffy, unexpectedly, they ended up in Hogback's room, so, Chopper immediately pushed Hogback aside, causing him to be crushed by a rock, seeing Orz approaching, Hogback panicked and begged Sindri to help him, but, she no longer listened to him, and she turned back to smile at Chopper, so, both of them were flattened by Orz, at this point, Orz was searching for the Straw Hat crew members, making Sanji surprised, taking advantage of this, Absalom kidnapped Nami, thus, Orz continued to destroy the castle, on Zoro's side, seeing a giant zombie surprised them, and they also saw Sanji below, while he was angry, for letting Absalom take Nami away, on Usopp's side, they also saw Orz, making him frightened, because he realized Orz was hunting them, Sanji was very angry at Orz blocking his way, Orz recognized Sanji as a Straw Hat crew member, while Absalom was preparing to kiss Nami, on Luffy's side, they were still chasing after Moria, while Sanji was being attacked by Orz, making everyone worried, because that zombie was too strong, they realized he was using Luffy's techniques, but his arms couldn't stretch out, so, Sanji immediately kicked him, but, Orz remained unharmed, and he knocked Sanji away, thus, he was caught by Orz, when Orz was about to finish Sanji, Usopp attacked him, making Orz angry and immediately attacking everyone, so, Zoro rushed in, using his technique to cut off one of Orz's fangs, but, he was knocked into the sky by him, Frankie also attacked him, but then he threw the entire tower at them, at this point, Robin caught Zoro, when Orz was about to continue attacking him, Usopp shot salt into his mouth, but, because there was too little salt, it had no effect, so, he continued to attack and completely defeated the group, at this moment, Orz realized that Luffy and Nami were still around, thus, he went to find them, on Nami's side, when she woke up, she saw Absalom trying to kiss her, luckily, Lola appeared and stopped him, but, Lola thought Nami wanted to marry Absalom, so, she attacked her, turns out it was Lola who was catching his attention, to help Nami escape, because Lola saw Nami as her friend, which made Absalom furious and knocked Lola out, suddenly, Nami decided to stay, after seeing Lola being hit by him, making Nami angry, so, Nami immediately used lightning to attack him, making him think it was a love lightning bolt, and Absalom was also defeated, on Luffy's side, he was chasing Moria's shadow, but he escaped, so, he destroyed the entire forest, while Orz was still looking for Nami and Luffy, Zoro and the others had all woken up, they decided to defeat this giant zombie, to retrieve their captain's shadow, which made Orz very happy, because he got to fight them again, he jumped up to crush the whole group, so, they dodged, at this moment, Frankie decided to use a combination technique, making Usopp and Chopper excited, thus, he combined with them, like assembling the Power Rangers robot, thinking it would be very cool, suddenly, Frankie realized someone was missing, thus, he told Robin to join them, but, Robin saw it as a childish game, Orz noticed they weren't transforming anymore, so, he punched them into the wall, at this moment, Sanji attracted Orz's attention, Zoro used a stone club to attack him, when Orz was about to attack Sanji, Usopp immediately shot oil into his hand, causing him to slip and fall, Sanji immediately threw Zoro towards Orz, so, he could strike at his elbow, Robin also immediately used her devil fruit power, to control Orz's other arm, then, Frankie and Chopper also attacked, at this moment, Sanji noticed Orz only had one leg left, so, he jumped up and kicked straight into his knee joint, causing Orz to fall, and rendering him immobile, this made Orz furious, on Perona's side, she noticed the situation wasn't good, so, she intended to steal Luffy's ship and escape, unexpectedly, another seven warlords of the sea appeared, Nami realized Perona had taken all the treasures in the castle and was planning to escape, thus, she quickly ran back to the sunny ship, at this moment, Orz had been pinned down to the ground, and he couldn't move anymore, the group realized this was their chance for retaliation, so, they ruthlessly beat him, making the other zombies watch in fear, unexpectedly, Orz managed to break free, at this moment, Orz was very angry, suddenly, Usopp realized he still had Luffy's consciousness, so, he tricked him by saying there was a mountain of meat ahead, 
Frankie and Zoro immediately struck at his leg joint, causing Ors to collapse. Ors was angry because he had been deceived. At this moment, Zoro decided to try out his new sword, and he began to use the three sword style. On Nami's side, she returned to the sunny ship to prevent Perona from taking all the treasure. When she intended to fight Nami, suddenly, that warlord of the sea appeared behind them. Perona immediately recognized him as Kuma. At this moment, Kuma asked, If you could travel, where would you go? So, she replied that she wanted to go to a haunted castle, but, she immediately attacked Kuma. Unexpectedly, Kuma just lightly touched, and Perona disappeared, causing all the zombies to be shocked and flee. While Nami was still surprised, Kuma instantly teleported to her. He asked Nami, Luffy has a brother, right? Nami immediately recognized it as Ace. Unexpectedly, Kuma left. Nami realized he was looking for Luffy. On Luffy's side, he had caught Moria, but it was just his shadow. Luffy realized he had been tricked by Moria and led far away. Turns out Moria just wanted to lure Luffy away from everyone else. So, he immediately found his way back. On Zoro's side, he was battling Oars to test out his new sword. Unexpectedly, he could block Oars' punch and counterattack him. Now, Zoro realized this sword was very powerful, but it also made Oars furious, and he kept attacking him relentlessly. When Zoro fought back, Oars managed to dodge every blow. At this point, they realized they needed to defeat Oars before dawn. Earlier, Kuma had a conversation with Moria. He informed Moria that the world government fears he will be defeated by the Straw Hats, because Luffy defeated Luchi at Ini's lobby, which angered Moria. So, Moria decided he would immediately defeat the Straw Hats to prove his strength. Meanwhile, the whole team was trying to figure out how to defeat Oars. Suddenly, Moria emerged from within Oars, surprising everyone. Oars was very pleased. As he felt like a giant robot, the team realized defeating Oars would be even harder now. But, they were still determined to do it. So, Moria ordered Oars to attack Usopp, making everyone worried. Luckily, Brooke managed to rescue him in time, and brought back a large bag of salt. Now, the team just needs to put that bag of salt into Oars' mouth. Then, they can defeat him. But, Moria remains unconcerned. So, the whole group began to take action. Usopp immediately uses fire stars on Oars. Setting him ablaze, Zoro jumps up to cut down the tower. Thus, Sanji can kick the debris towards him. Unexpectedly, Oars hits them back towards Brook. Fortunately, Robin and Frankie manage to save him. While Usopp teams up with Frankie, shooting Frankie towards Moria. But, Moria dodges his attack, and Oars punches him straight into the wall. So, Frankie gets knocked out. When Oars is about to finish off Frankie, Nami appears and uses lightning to attack Oars resulting in both him and Moria being electrocuted. It turns out Nami is standing on the castle, so, Oars turns to attack Nami, thinking his arms can't reach her, but this time he can extend his arms, surprising the whole team. Luckily, Robin manages to save Nami in time, so, he proceeded to attack the entire group again, leaving them puzzled as to how his limbs can extend. On Luffy's side, while trying to find his way back to the others, he encounters a group of people, who are all victims of Moria's shadow theft, Thus, they want to help Luffy defeat Moria. Unexpectedly, Lola turns out to be their leader. They say they have a secret weapon that can help Luffy defeat the giant zombie. Suddenly, they take out a shadow and insert it into Luffy's body, making Luffy feel strange. They ask, do you know how to use a sword? I don't know. Unexpectedly, as soon as a sword is thrown to him, Luffy can cut down a tree, surprising himself because he knows swordsmanship. It turns out he can insert shadows into his body to increase his strength. But this state only lasts for 10 minutes, so, they immediately insert many shadows into Luffy's body, leaving Lola astonished, because Luffy can hold up to 100 shadows, while normal people can only contain up to 20 shadows. Unexpectedly, Luffy has completely transformed. Now, he feels a new source of power within his body. So, Luffy goes back to find Moria. On Or's side, he is continuously attacking the group, it turns out Moria is using shadows to stretch his arms and legs, making the group realize this battle will be more difficult. Suddenly, Brook comes up with a plan. So, Nami creates a thundercloud for Usopp to shoot Brook into it, while Robin helps Brook spin around, creating a powerful attack towards Oars that pierces through his arm. Zoro immediately attacks, but Oars manages to dodge. Thus, he goes after Brook instead. He then targets Usopp. But when he tries to stretch his arm to attack him, he can't do it. It turns out Robin has restrained Moria. 
So, Robin quickly finishes him off. Thinking they've won, unexpectedly, Moria's shadow appears behind Robin. As he can also switch bodies with his shadow, he pulls out Robin's shadow and steals it, enraging Sanji in the process. So, Sanji immediately attacks Moria. But, Moria switches positions again, and returns to Orr's body. When Orr's is about to deal with Robin, Sanji intervenes. Meanwhile, Chopper is on Orr's shoulder, having studied Orr's body. When Orr's attacks him, Chopper shrinks and dodges his attack. So, Chopper and Sanji immediately counterattack. But, Orr's remains unfazed, and promptly uses a barrage of punches to attack both. Thus, Sanji and Chopper are also defeated. Now, only Zoro, Usopp, and Nami remain, making Usopp anxious. But, Zoro still continued to stand in his way. Unexpectedly, he was thrown against the wall by him. Turns out Zoro had drawn attention to himself, allowing Usopp to defeat Moria. At this moment, Orz leapt and delivered a powerful punch at Zoro. But, he managed to block it, thinking everything was going according to plan. Unexpectedly, Orz immediately struck Zoro against the wall, and defeated him, seizing the opportunity. Usopp promptly shot salt into Orz's mouth. This made Usopp very happy, because they believed they had won the battle, thinking Luffy's shadow would escape. Unexpectedly, Moria's shadow managed to catch the salt bag. So, Orz promptly defeated Usopp and Nami as well, as he excitedly stomped on them repeatedly. Fortunately, Luffy arrived just in time and saved them both, surprising Usopp and Nami, because it saw Luffy's current form. So, Orz immediately attacked Luffy, but he only blocked the blow with one hand, leaving Moria astonished. Luffy continued to punch Orz away into the forest, making Nami and Usopp unable to believe it, because Luffy was now too strong. He easily knocked down Orz. At this moment, Lola's group ran over to help Luffy's group, while Luffy kept attacking Orz relentlessly. He then threw him back towards the castle, making Orz furious and attack Luffy. But, he was slashed by Luffy. While Moria was worrying, Luffy immediately punched him in the face, and then used a barrage of punches, sending Orz crashing into the castle, leaving everyone surprised. Unexpectedly, Luffy had run out of time. So, the shadows within his body immediately left. At this moment, everyone was rejoicing. Seeing Luffy had defeated Moria and Orz, suddenly, Orz managed to stand up again, terrifying everyone. As they were about to run back to the forest, Zoro stood up, and they couldn't see the other members of the Straw Hat crew anywhere. Turns out Luffy's group had begun to act. Robin immediately created a staircase, for Brooke to bring Luffy to the top of the castle. Nami immediately conjured a rainstorm onto Orz. At this moment, Frankie had finished constructing the freezing machine, and shot it at Orz, freezing his legs in ice. Sanji then kicked a large chain to restrain him, rendering Orz immobile. Then, Brook threw Luffy down, and he immediately used Gear 3 to inflate his arm. While Zoro slashed at Orz, Sanji pulled the chain, straightening his spine. It turned out to be Chopper's plan. Finally, Luffy unleashed a powerful blow to his face, shattering Orz's spine completely. So, he was completely defeated, making Lola's group very happy. Unexpectedly, they saw Luffy shrink back down. By now, the sun had begun to rise. Suddenly, Moria regained consciousness, surprising everyone, because he had not been defeated yet. So, he immediately used his devil fruit power, and began absorbing all the shadows of the zombie horde, causing his body to start changing. While Luffy could only hold 100 shadows, Moria's body could contain 1000 shadows turning him into a giant, making everyone worried, and losing all hope of defeating Moria. Seeing Moria's power, making everyone frightened and run away, as the sun had risen and was burning them. But Lola realized that Luffy's group had not given up. So, Luffy decided to fight him. He used Gear 2 and rushed to attack Moria, causing the shadows within his body to begin to escape. At this point, everyone realized that Moria couldn't control 1000 shadows, but, he immediately caught Luffy, and delivered a powerful punch to him, seeing him stomping on Luffy, making everyone think he had been defeated. Unexpectedly, Luffy immediately stood up. So, Luffy used Gear 3 combined with Gear 2, to prepare to attack Moria, making everyone worry, because last time his body couldn't handle this technique. But, Luffy still rushed to attack Moria, causing the shadows within Moria's body to want to escape. So, he immediately covered his mouth again, at this point, Luffy said, my shadow, if you want to become the pirate king, then come back to me. Thus, Luffy immediately unleashed another powerful blow, causing the castle to collapse and crush Moria underneath. So, 
All the shadows within his body escaped. Suddenly, the sun shone on Luffy's group, burning their bodies, but they were not worried and continued to wait. While the shadows were returning to their owners, making people all over the world very happy, because their shadows had returned, on Luffy's group side, they also regained their shadows, so, their bodies were restored, but people realized that Luffy still hadn't woken up, because using gear 2, his body had reached its limit, at this point, Lola's group was very happy, because Luffy's group helped them regain their shadows, suddenly, Nami suddenly remembered, there's still another warlord of the sea present here, unexpectedly, Kuma was still observing them, immediately making everyone worried, at this point, the world government ordered Kuma, to eradicate everyone on this island, so, Kuma began to act, unexpectedly, in the blink of an eye, Kuma teleported to Lola's group, with just a light touch, he incapacitated many people, making everyone terrified, suddenly, he teleported to Zoro's location, realizing he was being challenged, Zoro decided to fight him, so, Zoro immediately attacked Kuma, but, he dodged, and immediately counterattacked him, unexpectedly, his power was very strong, surprising everyone, he could even block Zoro's sword with his hand, at this point, Kuma told them, he had eaten the Nikyu Nikyu no Mi Devil fruit, which gave his hand the pop palmed human ability, unexpectedly, with just one blow, he knocked out Frankie, it turned out this move was called the pressure cannon, which could push air very quickly, even at the speed of light, so, Kuma continuously attacked Zoro, but, he managed to dodge and counterattack, unexpectedly, Zoro was immediately thrown back, when Kuma was about to finish off Zoro, Sanji immediately intervened, but, Kuma's body was very tough, causing great pain to his leg, while the group didn't know how to defeat Kuma, he compressed a massive air block, with the devil fruit power of Kuma, the air block began to shrink, Robin realized it was like a bomb, at this point, Kuma promised to spare everyone's lives, if they handed over Luffy to him, unexpectedly, everyone refused, so, Kuma released the air bomb from his hand, creating a huge explosion, that engulfed the entire Mori island, at this point, everyone was knocked out, when Kuma was about to take Luffy away, Zoro immediately appeared and attacked him, it was then that Zoro discovered, that Kuma was a cyborg, so, he fired a laser beam at Zoro, luckily, he managed to dodge, at this point, Kuma told Zoro, that he was a pacifista, a biomechanical being created by Dr. Vegapunk, Zoro realized he wanted to take Luffy's life, so, he said, use my life in exchange for his, this surprised Kuma, who asked, don't you have any ambitions? If even my captain, I cannot protect, what right do I have to have ambitions? And Zoro believed that Luffy would definitely become the pirate king, unexpectedly, Sanji stepped forward, he also wanted to use his life to exchange for Luffy's, but, Zoro immediately knocked Sanji unconscious, because he didn't want anyone else to sacrifice themselves, so, Kuma agreed, suddenly, Kuma grabbed Luffy, and used the power of the devil fruit, to push all of Luffy's pain and fatigue outwards, turning it into a red bubble, when Kuma just subjected Zoro to a small portion of it, it immediately caused him extreme pain, despite this, Zoro still tried to endure the bubble, to save his captain, at this point, Kuma decided to leave, he felt Luffy's teammates were really amazing, worthy of being Dragon's son, at this point, everyone had woken up, they realized that no one had died, unexpectedly, Luffy was very healthy, he no longer felt any pain, Sanji immediately went to look for Zoro, which surprised him, because Zoro's body was covered in blood, finally, the battle ended, while Luffy's group was preparing to celebrate, Chopper noticed that Zoro's injury was severe, Sanji realized that these two had seen everything, but, he told them not to tell Luffy, because Sanji didn't want Luffy to know that Zoro was injured because of him, Robin also eavesdropped on everything, at this point, everyone was happily feasting, while Luffy was pouring wine for Zoro to drink, to help him wake up soon, Brook started playing his music, to express his gratitude to Luffy's group, which made everyone very happy, at this moment, Luffy asked Brook again, do you want to become our crewmate? And Luffy told him, that they had met Laboon, even though it had been 50 years, Laboon was still waiting for Brook, this surprised Brook, he didn't expect Luffy's group to have met Laboon, which made Brook burst into tears, because he knew Laboon was still waiting for him, so, Brook agreed to join the Straw Hat crew, which made everyone very happy, that's it for today's video, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, to support Oni Chan in the upcoming videos, thank you for watching, love you all.